Hey guys, we'll probably put this video on our Pilots in Japan playlist as it's aviation related. This aviation museum was opened in Komaki in Aichi in central Japan this year, a couple of months ago. So Komaki Airport used to be the international airport for Aichi and for central Japan and then about 12, 14 years ago, Centre International Airport was opened. So this one, this airport became a domestic airport and it's shared with the Japan Self-Defence Force. So I've showed you a little bit about this before, this place before on the on the Pilots in Japan playlist. So one side of the runway is domestic and that's where this museum is situated and the other half is Japan Self-Defense Force. So it's sort of an interesting airport, so it's sort of an interesting place to put this. As far as this museum itself, well, we're going to show you just about everything that's in there just to give you a bit of an idea. You can decide for yourself if you think it's interesting enough to go and have a look. These models are examples of pretty much every aircraft that's been made in Japan throughout Japan's aviation history so for those people who are real aviation enthusiasts that are into this sort of thing you might find that interesting that, that was a da Vinci model wasn't it that helix shape this is actually up on the roof it's an observation deck so you can watch aircraft coming now interesting Komaki on the weekend is dead quiet so the aircraft that we flew on this particular day was the the only aircraft that actually came in in the hour preceding this. So there's the Japan Self-Defense Force on the other side there. So again, they usually don't operate on the weekend either. So if you're going to go to this place and you've got free time, go during the week because the airport will be busier and you might see a few interesting aircraft taking off and landing. These are hammocks. And the sign says that these are hammocks to lie in and absorb, observe the aircraft, which is sort of an interesting idea to lie back on your back and look up at the sky. But obviously you can't see the runway from there, which means when aircraft are coming in, you're not going to see them. So, for example, we've got a helicopter coming in over the taxiway. Now, you're going to see him when he's up there. If you're lying on the hammock, providing there's no one standing in front of you, you'll see him till about now and then you won't be able to see him anymore <laughs> so it's sort of an interesting idea but it's not even under the downwind leg or anything so lying on those hammocks isn't really going to give you a good view of aircraft at all really it's a bit of a funny idea and then this is probably an even better example look at this this is the uh, what's it called japan what's the fuji dream airline fda so you're not going to see that at all from that hammock. No way in the world. That's what a normal landing looks like on runway 34. So, yeah, Fuji Dream Airlines, a uh, domestic operator. So anyway, back inside again, they've got a bunch of aircraft seats here lined up in front of a library. So you can go and get a book off the shelf, some aviation-related book, and sit on a aircraft seat there and read a book, which is sort of an interesting thing to do. In a museum, a couple of helicopters. Oh, this ultralight's interesting. This is being made by some university students, apparently. Those of you into aircraft, there's a ultralight called a Max Air Drifter that was a bit nostalgic. The old unskilled labourer learnt to drive, fly in a Max Air Drifter about 28 years ago. <laughs> so that ultralight was a bit nostalgic. So here's a zero, guys. This is the high point, no doubt. The high point of this museum is this, this zero that actually still flies. We showed you some photos a while ago. One of our flying club members actually got a photo, some photos of this in the air. Bit of a shame he didn't video it, but he, he took photos of it in the air doing some circuits so now and again 
they open the doors and they back it back it outside and fire it up and take it for a fly. One of only a handful still operating around the world, apparently. There's another one down in... Might be another one in Kagoshima, down in Kyushu. There are a couple around Japan. Not, not sure how many are still flying. Not many. This is a educational thing. So typical Japan style with the cute little ninja character explaining flight. So... You know, flying flying is very popular now. People use it to get around the world, and so on and so forth. And then they just uh, it, they explain the theories of flight. So, lift, drag, thrust, gravity, and how engines work, and a few little basics like that. So, yeah, no, it's not running. <laughs> it's not running. Sort of all speaking for itself, really, isn't it? Not much to say about this stuff, really. Sort of wasn't really exciting the, the seeing the zero was interesting it's hard to know it depends on on what your interests are when it comes to aviation if you are a pilot and you're into flying then this might not might not get you in because it's just sort of looking at aircraft that you'd normally see parked up on the tarmac anyway so um, oh this is sort of interesting they've got windows in the hangar doors so people in the museum can look outside and see what's going on outside again it's sunday so there's not much happening but on a on a mon on a weekday it would be quite interesting looking out from there This this was a JSDF aircraft that was actually used to fly the Prime Minister around. Apparently, bit of interesting symbol on the on the back there, mascot or whatever you'd call that. But yeah, it's one they used to fly the Prime Minister around in VIP jet, government jet, operated by the JSDF. Oh, and then there's this. This is the they call it the flying box. It's sort of like a fun park ride, basically. You go in there and sit on a chair. There's a big screen. You look at the big screen and the, the seat you're sitting on moves and gives you the the illusion of movement, of flight. So, yeah, sort of like a amusement park ride. 
It was okay. They didn't allow cameras in there, unfortunately, but yeah, it was all right. You sort of might be getting the idea. It's not wasn't terribly exciting. It sort of wasn't really. It depends. I mean, some people, the sort of people that know know different types of aircraft by looking at them and are into that sort of stuff would probably like this place. There is a, a sort of a simulator thing here. They call it the career experience, as you can see. Mm, a very basic sort of simulator. I was like, oh, well, might be worth a go, you know, how, how, you know, just to sort of see what it's like. But not surprisingly, as we've talked about on previous videos, often there's a lot of unnecessary faffing goes on when there's things like this, and this was no exception. So you have to get a ticket, first of all, to, to, to have a go at this career experience thing, and then you've got to put on a helmet, and as you can see, there's mostly kids doing it, and then the staff take you around and show you all the parts of the aeroplane. And it's supposed to be simulating a pre-flight, right? So it's the pre-flight pilot walk-around where you go around and checking all the, all the external parts of the aircraft. So, And while they're doing that, all these people are lined up here to go onto the aircraft and have a look. And they only let two or three people in at a time. So at the moment we've got one, two, we've got the security guards, two of them, we've got a couple of volunteer staff, we got three of those other ladies that are working with the the kids, and so while those while those ladies were doing the walk around with the kids around the aircraft, there was a long line of people waiting to actually go on this aircraft and have a look at it. And everyone's just standing there. You can see there's a tape across the bottom of the stairs, and nothing's happening. So obviously they could be showing people through. They could have the, the back stairs and the front stairs out so that people could go up and walk through and walk down. But the whole time these kids were doing this thing, all these other people just had to stand there. Now this, is, this isn't straight away. This is another 15 minutes later. Obviously everything's moved there, right? So this is typical, you get this in Japan all the time. The Japanese people are so patient, they'll just stand there quietly waiting. And then eventually, much later, the kids eventually actually got to try out these little basic simulators. And all those people that were waiting started to get shown through that aeroplane. But they were waiting at least 30 minutes in that line, just standing there. There was no one on the aeroplane itself. And there was lots of staff. There's lots and lots and lots of staff. And this is really common in Japan. We, we've predicted on previous videos that this is going to be an issue during the Olympics because Japanese, are, ex, Japanese people are extremely patient when it comes to things like this. And they will just stand patiently waiting for 30 minutes for no apparent reason. And no one will complain. Nobody will rock the boat. Everybody will stand there quietly. So we anticipate when the Olympics are on, there'll be a lot of this sort of stuff, a lot of sort of pedantic faffing around in order to do something. You'll stand around for an hour to do something that takes five minutes. So try not to be negative about this place, just trying to be honest with you about it. Oh, this is a funny thing too. Here's the toilets. They've got the, the pilot symbol for the men's toilets and the flight attendant symbol for the female toilets. Sexism is alive and well in Japan. <laughs> Of course, you wouldn't have a male flight attendant or a female pilot, would you? That'd be crazy. <laughs> anyway, it's all right. We'll put a link underneath this video, a little bit more information on it if you want to go and check it out. At least now you know if you go, that's what it's going to be like. That's what it, that's what it looks like. Anyway, there it was. More videos coming soon.